Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ashley Proctor and I am with uh, Coworking Canada and Creative Blueprint and I'm one of the co-founders of the Coworking Idea Project. If you are new to the Coworking Idea Project, we are an international collective of co-working operators and associations, community organizers, collaborative consultants, and we are committed to making the co-working industry more inclusive, more diverse, more equitable, and more accessible. And we believe that by working collaboratively and internationally, we can make a ripple effect throughout the industry and that our actions matter. So each of us have the opportunity to make decisions in our businesses, in our organizations, in our communities. And we often have the privilege, the privilege of a platform or access to a larger network who we can also influence by changing our behavior and by leading by example. These small changes lead to larger impact and ideally our market and our industry will collectively begin to know better, to do better and to demand better. So each month we invite an individual or an organization to issue a challenge, something that we can all do to take action, whether it be large or small, um, to have an impact in the, in the co-working movement. And this month, our challenge facilitator is Jerome Chang, and I'll turn it over to him to introduce this month's challenge. Hi, Jerome. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me, Ashley. This is uh, uh, it's been a topic I've been wanting to address again. Uh, some of you may remember that back in uh, July 2021, uh, a colleague of mine, Siobhan Sherry, and I uh, issued a challenge about um, in you know, incorporating more diversity into our various facets of co-working. And I thought uh, with, uh, you know, with 2023, we can, you know, narrow that focus a little more and talk about the upcoming fall season of conferences around the world, um, domestically in the US, in Europe, specific countries and all that. And I think, um, you know, we can disrupt the status quo uh, quite a bit by demanding some more diversity in these conferences. Uh, again, there's many aspects of co-working and I, the way I see co-working, the co part as community and community uh, should be fundamentally uh, inclusive uh, across all uh, demographics. And um, part of that is a diversity of ethnicity. Uh, as someone who's attended, uh, I don't know, the last dozen years worth of conferences, uh, uh, to, you know, I should qualify that it was only in the U.S., but I think the U.S. ones do represent a, a wide variety of what's out there in the world. Uh, and my counterparts in Europe and other countries have all reiterated the same, you know, um, experiences and perceptions of these conferences. And that is that the attendants, the panelists, all around, uh, the people involved in these conferences uh, could use a lot more diversity, could be more inclusive. Uh, I'm happy to see that there has been some uptick in the diversity at the attendees, but, you know, uh, setting an example through, um, uh, through leadership, through being on stage, uh, through speaking out, through sponsorships, um, I think those actions uh, could be greatly improved. And I hope that this challenge will uh, remind people the challenge we issued two years ago that, uh, you know, in the closing of the pandemic, even though we're technically still in a pandemic, but a lot of things are returning to normal that let's return to a new normal where we close the chapter on a uh, previous lack of diversity, lack of inclus inclusion, and let's open a new chapter where it is apparently much more intentional and much more inclusive as an outcome. Yeah, I think the intentionality is is really important to point out because um, every organizer has an opportunity to define the conference or the gathering and an opportunity to select and curate speakers and an opportunity to set the price point or the location. Um, and so there are a lot of opportunities to make sure that our co-working events are inclusive, diverse, representative. Uh, sustainable. Uh, we can commit to, uh, to a certain kind of inclusive community and holding space in our codes of conduct. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that there are some smaller operators and, and smaller conferences around the world, particularly ones organized by alliances, um, that are, are really paying attention to these things and intentionally programming. And, and granted, it may be a bit easier to do at a smaller scale, 
um, these are still decisions that each of us have to make. And so I think it's important um, that we collaborate as well on the things that, that we know are working and different policies we can hold as organizers um, and put in place for our organizations to ensure that these conferences are, are meeting the mark. Yeah, you know, speaking of the size of these conferences, uh, I'd like to look at it, you know, our related industry, uh, real estate. There is a very large uh, US organization. I think they're semi-global, at least in, in the UK um, and in the US. It's called Biz Now, and it's just, you know, straight up core real estate topics. And uh, I noticed that um, uh, early 2020, if not 20, you know, or even 2021, but I think it was 2020, I noticed that every single time they announced a, a breakfast session, a lunch session, an all day session, they show the, the panelists or speakers involved, they were diverse. I mean, we're talking about the most traditional, most fractionalized real estate type uh, industry, such as real estate. And really, to be honest, doesn't have the best uh, reputation in terms of inclusion and diversity. This organization that is the most prominent within the real, real estate industry, they have done it repeatedly. Every single time I look at announcements for their events, their, you know, the, their panelists and the participants are diverse. So, gosh, if they can do it, you, and they're large and they're for profit, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and we've seen a lot of progress in terms of having these conversations at the unconference sessions, in the hallways, in events that are being held adjacent to these conferences. Um, but what we're really asking for here is to, to elevate these issues into the organizing team and onto the main stage. Um, this conversation has been going on for years. Uh, we've been trying to call people in uh, to this movement, um, asking people to do better, providing opportunities and introductions to a diverse uh, and representative list of speakers, uh, trying to elevate uh, speakers or, or offer um, panels um, that, that that elevate and amplify um, a, a representation, a diverse representation of the operators in this industry. Um, but we still see intentional exclusion and, and power being elevated on stage. And so I think it's time again for demanding this diversity in a new way. Um, we've, been, we've been doing a lot of educating and, and, um, and asking for change. And um, so I really do wanna note the shift in tone from, from requesting or asking or, uh, to demanding. And so, um, you know, it's not just the, the operators that are responsible. Um, we've made the case for profitability. We've made the case for diversity and inclusion and that being our strength um, as an industry and as a movement. If that's still not enough um, for an organizer to change, I think it's up to the other players um, that are involved to, to make change. And so who is responsible um, for changing the status quo and ensuring diverse representation I think, Jerome, you've got a couple of ideas of, of who we might be able to, to call in um, to assist. Well, you know, the conference itself is, uh, is a community uh, involving various participants. Um, of course, the uh, event organizer, we have the sponsors, uh, we have uh, panelists, speakers, moderators and such. And then we have the attendees. Uh, all those people uh, should at this point be much more intentional about uh, with whom they engage in these uh, uh, events. And if it doesn't represent who they wanna be or who they are, uh, then they walk away having aided and abetted, you know, intentionally or not, aided and abetted, uh, you know, bad acts. And we're asking everyone to just be much more aware, much more intentional, and let's follow through with our intentions uh with actual actions this time around we have the fall season coming up a few months away and as we're planning for booking a travel booking a hotel buying tickets and seeing which conferences you may attend please reassess which ones you will attend based on uh, what will represent you better yeah i think it's a it's a great uh, point around the actual, the specific actions we can take. And so as an attendee, um, we can wait to see the speaker list uh, instead of buying an early bird ticket, showing support for an event uh, without knowing if the representation uh, of the speakers is gonna be diverse or inclusive. Um, 
you know, as a sponsor, uh, we can say that we, we'd be happy to sponsor as long as there is a commitment to diversity and representation or to, um, to um, ensuring that, that the content is co-created even with the local community, for example. Um, and I think also as a speaker, one of the things that, that we've heard in the past, and I know um, Hector uh, Colonis has, has often spoke about his uh, commitment, uh, the pledge that he signed, um, and I think others um, are excited to do so this month, take a similar pledge to not appear uh, or speak on a panel that isn't a balanced panel, so an, a gender diverse panel or a representative panel across many regions, for example. Um, and so we can all find at least one way to make a commitment and to stick to that action uh, to insist on, upon change. Yeah, and even deeper in there is the hope that, you know, we don't have someone, um, a person of color on stage or as a moderator as the token minority. Um, yeah, I think if we can reframe our mind and value someone who hasn't yet had a chance to speak, but is a person of color, someone who's local, perhaps someone with a new, uh, a new vantage point. I mean, we're all capable of speaking. They just need that chance to be able to speak. But please, you know, be careful about uh, bringing someone on stage and being the token minority. Yeah, and I think that's that's actually part of um, this challenge and, and part of the reasoning for this challenge because there has been some, I think, efforts in the past to, to be perhaps more representative, um, but the efforts cause more harm than good when, when we're tokenizing folks. And, um, and so absolutely, I, I encourage all of our conference organizers to be thinking really clearly about their intention. And if this isn't an area they're comfortable um, working in, there are a lot of idea experts, there are a lot of curators, there are a lot of folks who are tapped into these communities who know the experts. And, um, and I agree about taking chances on folks. Every one of us were given a chance in our early careers to speak about what it is that we were doing and working on and what our vision is for this movement and, and for this world. Um, but also there are just so many extreme cases of talent and success in the BIPOC community that are simply being overlooked and excluded. So it's not like that talent isn't there. Um, understandably, uh, folks all along the process have been excluded from opportunities. And so we aren't seeing, you know, a fully equitable uh, balance of, of uh, sorry, an equal balance of, of um all genders and and you know all identities being represented in terms of ownership and and um, and uh, a really significant invest, investment in the working industry, uh, but we actually need to take intentional action to make that difference, and otherwise we end up with the status quo. And so doing nothing at this point is is uh, allowing the status quo to exist. It's honestly just negligent. Uh, so let's summarize. Uh, it's both top down and bottom up. Mm -hmm. and all everything in between top down our event organizers sponsors um and even the moderators were the panel uh or the panels but primarily moderators uh, and then from bottom up are the attendees so we're asking everyone to reassess uh by buying that ticket until you know or have assurance that this conference you'll attend is is going to be as diverse as uh, you think will represent you I think as the uh, moderator, uh, I found that uh, moderators are often just as influential in who is on that panel you're moderating. I ask you to reconsider whom you ask to be on a panel, even if it's last minute, to be just as intentional as you do with your, with your personal and professional lives, because this uh, being on stage, you know, you're being on stage like the panelists. It's going to uh, the outcome is going to re uh, is going to represent who you are, um, and then for the sponsors, like please reconsider how this conference is going to reflect upon your brand and, uh, for your customers who may not even attend the conference and will perceive you and change their minds about whether or not to use your product or service. And the event organizers, I mean, this is your this is your company, this is your for profit business. Uh, do you want? The conference attendees to walk away thinking yet again this may be uh, uh, this may lack in diversity may lack in inclusion uh, and may lose sponsorships and attendees for the next round um, 
So top down, uh, event organizers and sponsors, bottom up, um, moderators and attendees, everyone is involved here. Yeah, I think it's really important that that you're pointing that out. Um, but both approaches, and so this is a this is an industry, this is a movement problem. Um, it's not just an event problem, and we're all contributing to it, even if we're contributing by by staying silent. And um, I think the last thing I just wanted to to come back to was the financial component, um, because I know a lot of folks think like, what what's my one little ticket in a hundred thousand dollar conference? Um, but a small group of people can make a significant amount of difference. Um, and uh, a couple of sponsors can make a significant amount of impact for an organizer as well. And so if we aren't seeing the change that we're demanding, there are other ways. Um, and I think those financial ways are, are extremely important to, to, to back up our values here. Yeah, and just add it up. Um, an attendee will pay six, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars for a ticket, let's say eight hundred dollars. And um, if a dozen of you decide to hold and reassess 12 times eight, that's almost $10,000, it's $9,600. Um, for every $10,000 block of uh, lack of ticket um, is a significant portion of the conference budget. Uh, many conferences are 100K plus. So you could conceivably make it, you know, an impact on 10%. Sponsors pay five, $10,000 a piece. So, you know, that could be another 10%. So, you know, really want to, you know, we're really trying to be careful here to not insist on some kind of universal protest whatsoever. We just want everyone to really understand what they're walking into uh, and to reassess that this represents themselves. Um, many of us have been very quietly, privately, uh, discreetly uh, asking all the various participants involved in these conferences for many years now. And uh, some have heard it, us, some have, ha have heard not, some of them have not heard us, um, and been a variety of messengers. So it's not just, the, uh, you know, sometimes a messenger can make the difference. It's been a complete variety of messengers. Um, so I believe the message resonates. And let's get more messengers out there in all formats. I love the approach. And I want to thank you again for, for bringing up this topic. Um, I know that that it's a, a difficult one, um, and I think it's important again to approach it holistically. That we all have a role to play in this. This isn't an organizer problem; it's an industry or a movement problem. So, um, yeah, I appreciate. I really appreciate um, bringing this topic to the forefront again, Jerome, and and for also um, the work you do with the Idea Project and in surrounding conversations uh, with Lexi and other organizations around these these topics and. Um, and I'd love to see more champions uh, following in your footsteps and, and using the IDEA project as an entry point for conversations that, that make changes like this. Um, so for those who are, are following along, uh, you can find our blog post and all the information, also a checklist uh, to take this challenge at coworkingidea.org. And you can join us on the last Wednesday of the month for our free uh, IDEA conversation. Uh, we're going to have guest speakers. Uh, Jerome will be there, as well as Siobhan Cherry, who will be joining us, who issued the challenge in 2021, uh, coming back for a bit of a, a review and update and to talk about some actions we can take as a group. So if you would like to work on some of these policies or work on strategies for increasing the diversity and representation um, at co-working events, we'd love to see you at the end of the month. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you again, Jerome. Thank you. Take care.